Chelsea won, Brighton nil, and Chelsea finally win a game. When I tell you Chelsea finally win a game, I mean it's been four wins in 2023. Chelsea knock out Brighton and Hove Albion from the Carabao Cup. It doesn't matter when the win, the win comes. We're one game closer to a trophy. This is Chelsea Football Club. We don't go two years without a trophy. We need to win a trophy this year. We beat Carabao Cup competition in Brighton. We get through to the next round. We knock out a team that will potentially be in and around the trophy. So it's positives all round. There are so many advantageous things to take out of this game. There are some negatives, but we will literally break down the good, the bad, the downright ugly. And this is the Guff Guys you and this is Chatting Breeze. And we are all going to be very happy, positive, but realistic with today's game. Let's get into it. Let's break this down. I know you're here and you're- First of all, I'm still a little bit under the weather. My voice is still very crackled. I'm gonna be every five seconds, but you lot deserve this content. I am very happy. I'm happy with the result. The performance was a little bit shaky, but it doesn't matter because we've had good performances without the results. Is Lady Luck starting to turn in our favor? Before we get started, hit that like button. A thousand likes on today's video shouldn't even be hard because we've won a game. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. Chelsea winning the game is a mirror. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, because I'm not gonna lie to you, this channel isn't like many channels, right? You get the cold hard truth here on a regular basis. You literally get what I think when I think it. I don't sugarcoat it, I don't blueprint it, I'm not trying to get a job at Chelsea Football Club. I say it how it is, because I'm a fan first, content creator second. Let's get on with it. It's only right that we talk about the positives, and the first positive I took out of this game is Poch took it seriously, Poch knew how much this game meant, Poch understands what it meant to the fans to win a game and more importantly Poch understands what it means to the players confidence when there is such a young team to win this game. He went strong and when I tell you he went strong he didn't go needlessly strong. He went strong in a wise manner. He went this sassy and Colwell, he gave Thiago Silva the night off. He went Chilwell at left back, he went Kukurea at right back, and it literally gave us a blueprint to go off. Little bit more experience, little bit more know-how, little bit more grit. Keeper was Sanchez. Sanchez was playing against us today, but it was positive. Ogachokwa and Quesado, you get a little bit of attacking flair with Palmer and Mudrick. Madsen at right wing, I don't know what he thinks Madsen is, and Jackson. And all of a sudden, the team just looked a little bit more composed, good ingenuity in the final third, trying to do something, and it was positive. And we finally scored a goal, and that's the second best thing about this game. We finally broke the duck. And how did the goal come? It came from nice pressing from Mudrick. He rushed him into a pass, he drops to Caicedo. Caicedo gives it to Palmer, to Matson. Matson gives it to Palmer. And Palmer today was absolutely pivotal. I said something about Palmer on Twitter and people received it very well, so I'm gonna repeat it here. Palmer reminds me of James Madison at Norwich. James Madison at Norwich was raw. He had all the attributes to be linking up play, creative, but he was inconsistent, purely based on the fact that he was 19, 20 year old. So this is normal and Palmer's gonna go through the peaks and troughs and we need to stick with him. We need to be allowing him and encouraging him to express himself. We can't be discouraging him every time he has a bad performance. Take him out the firing line, put him back in, nurture the player. And the part, other players would have panicked in that situation. He took that touch, he was composed, nutmeg through, and Nico Jackson finished that very strong. He miskicked it in my opinion, it bubbled in, it doesn't matter. It, you saw what it meant to him. He started pointing at the badge, gave the badge a kiss. He turned into a passion merchant and I love it. The third best thing about today's game, Nico Jackson's determination and grit. There are two ways of looking at Nico Jackson. You can look at Nico Jackson in one way, which a lot of our fan base is looking at him. He ain't good enough. He can't finish, he's rubbish. Or you can look at him the way I'm looking at him. He's a 22 year old kid playing at Chelsea Football Club, being asked to lead the line where it should be somewhere someone who is 25 or older in the peak of their career, leading the line and Nico Jackson should be the backup, getting bench minutes and coming on for cup where the pressure is off him and he's here to impress. Today, Nico Jackson done the thing that he's very good at. He got a lot of chances. And sometimes, some strikers don't do that very well. And Nico got two chances. He, he missed the one-on-one -on -one and he scored the other one. -on -one. Then Nico had a goal that, in my opinion, looked perfectly onside. We're gonna talk about VAR a little bit later, but for me, Nico looked perfectly onside. He took that one really well, and it would have been 2-0, 
game over, Nico Jackson with a brace, and the whole narrative would have started shifting about him. Now he's going to be missing for a few games, maybe with a wrist injury, <coughs> or potentially he's going to be gone because of the fact that he's suspended for one game against the foot. So that's a little bit frustrating. Brozier came on and looked very promising. So that is a good thing where Brozier can play the next game. We don't know if he can play the 90, but we're going to need him to play a big role in that. What was also very telling is Mikhailo Mudrik is a project that we need to get behind. Mikhailo Mudrik is a very talented player, and I think he doesn't get enough credit for how good he is. For me, Mikhailo credit, Mikhailo credit, Mikhailo Mudrik in the first half, driving up to Rick Lamptey, coming inside, good way of pass. His ability once he gets the ball and expresses himself is there for all to see. The problem is the guy is non-existent off the ball. He doesn't move, he doesn't show for the ball. He needs to be coached. And this would have been perfect opportunity to give him minutes here and there if Nkunku was fit, but he's not. So Mudrik's performance today, for me, I'd say he was a little bit above average, he arguably looked like our best player in the first 30 minutes because of the way he creates chances when he's expressing himself. But we don't see it enough and we need to. Well, the other notable shout outs, as I like to call it, go to Ugo Choko. I think Ugo Choko overall had a good game. A little moment of madness where I thought he was going to get sent off. But overall, he was shielding it. He was tracking runners. Brighton moved around a lot. Caicedo looked good. I saw a lot of people getting at Caicedo. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact how much he costs. So people just assume you're a 115 million pound player, you need to play every game world class, you need to get two assists, you need to get three assists, you need to get five goals. No, he's 22 years old. He needs to develop. You need to give him time, you need to give him patience. This is the project that we've come into. We have come into a project where these kids are kids. Look how long it took Shuemeni and Kamavinga to become the players they have become. Why could they? Because they had Mudric and they had uh, Kroos playing the majority of the minutes and them coming in bit parts. When they had bad games, no one cared because the experienced heads took the flat. And in this case, there is no experienced heads. Then we need to talk about the Sassi and Colwell. Both of them were fantastic. Colwell man marked. Uh, Joao Pedro really well. Pedro tried to give him a horrible night. It didn't work. I think Pedro had one or two chances, but that was from our own fault. It's not like they were causing problems for us actively, in my opinion, where, you know, I was like, oh, Colwell's looking terrible. Or the Sassy's looking terrible. On the ball, they look good. And I think Kukurea right back might be the way forward until Reese James returns. The way Kukurea was aggressive but controlled today really gave me a lot to smile about because I think Kukurea is getting a lot of stick that is undeserved in my opinion. A lot of people have put, painted him with a brush that he's just not good enough. That Ben Chilwell was the solution, but he isn't. And I think that is extremely harsh to write off a player purely based on one year. You've made up a narrative that he's just not good enough for Chelsea Football Club. You want to make it sound that he's a 58 million pound player with add-ons that aren't getting activated and he sucks. But today, he was absolutely phenomenal in the sense that he was aggressive, he was on the front foot, he was composed, he gave us some experience, and I loved watching him play. But of course, you've come to this channel for the real truth, right? So we need to talk about the bad, and there were two bad things that I took away. Number one, we need to stop giving away dumb chances. This was the first game where I said, raw, we are giving away stupid chances and we are riding our luck. On another day, Brighton win this game. Because there's the Ansu Fati chance where Caicedo gets pickpocketed in front of the team because Sanchez puts him in no man's land. There's the Joao Pedro chance where Sanchez forgot he doesn't play for Brighton anymore and Joao Pedro absolutely fluffed his lines. He went for the little dink, jinkity majinky, and he absolutely misplaced it. Fatty tried to slot it, beautiful save from Sanchez. Then a Sully March caught a uh, diving header. Otherwise, Brighton were limited. But those three chances, in my opinion, were clear. And when you give clear chances of that magnitude, you get punished on other days. Today, we got away with it. Number two, and this is another bad thing. The lack of confidence is there for all to see. Jackson, in the first half, epitomized it. Cole Palmer in the first half was shy and not showing his confidence. Mudrick's body language when he was losing the ball was for all to see in the second half. They are short on confidence. We pick up a few wins and they are going to start expressing themselves. This is what happens with young teams. This is what happens when you have kids. 
they go through peaks and troughs. I sound like a closed book. I sound like a r record label right now. Someone that produced the song that sounds amazing and everyone keeps listening to it again, you know all the bars. And I'm repeating myself over and over again. At this moment in time, we are gonna go through purple patches, then we're gonna go through droughts. And the only time that I'm going to say we are fine is when we sign a little bit of experience and we start seeing consistency. Consistency is key and we don't have any of it at this moment in time. It's really worrying. I have no clue what's gonna happen against Fulham, but we won today. Now it's time for the ugly. A lot of you are gonna say, Alex, why didn't you give any credit, right, for Sanchez? Well, I'm gonna tell you, he goes into the ugly section for me today and purely for the fact that the downright ugly, he had horrible kicking statistics. His kicking, caused so much problems, right? He was literally reminding me of Edouard Mendy, the way he was using this. He was reckless, he was playing people into trouble, he was going long when he didn't need to go long, he was overhitting passes. It literally was inviting Brighton on and he was rattled. You're meant to be a ball playing goalkeeper. And if you can't play like a ball playing goalkeeper, big man, we don't need you, we can upgrade. So either step up or get out the team because this is beyond pathetic at this moment in time. What happened today cannot happen against Fulham. That's my personal opinion. Story number two, Ogo Chokwa. Ogo Chokwa got very lucky with his red card. VAR has to be, in my opinion, in every game if it's available. Today, we found out why I like VAR as much as I do. Because the gray is taken out. You know what should have been a red, or you know what should have got away with it. At the moment, I was living in gray. I was like, oh my God, is the ref gonna give the red? No, you see the replay, I'm a Chelsea fan, right? So I'm happy we got away with it. But if I'm a Brighton fan, I'm pissed. But don't be too pissed, because you got super lucky. Jackson's goal looked like a goal. It was a clear goal. He looked onside, yet we didn't get no replay from that angle, yet there's no VAR to check it, so we don't know. Brozier goes through one-on-one, -on -one. big man, he's in his own half. Linesman puts his flag up. I'm no referee in Sabon, but I know if he's in his own half, that can't be offside. Like, let me know that. Can it be offside if you're in your own half? Nah, you can't. Don't even bother telling me. But guys, we won a game. I'm very happy today. Like, genuinely very, very happy. More than you believe. At this moment in time, I feel like Pep Guardiola winning three Premier Leagues. That's how much Chelsea have made me suffer recently. So hit the like button, because we're aiming for a thousand. Subscribe to the channel and share this, because a lot of Chelsea fans need this voice of realism in their life. They need the Kafka's view in their life. Peace out, I'm out, have a lovely day.